The Fishing News is brought to you by Navionics, Okuma, Yozuri, Evinrude, Lama Glass, and the Star Island Yacht Club in Montauk, New York. Hope everybody had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I know the weather really didn't cooperate, so the reports are light this week, but we do have some gift ideas from some of our contributors. But first, I wanted to remind you that the big December issue of the Fisherman Magazine is out now, and there is an Angler's Holiday Gift Guide that you don't want to miss. Plus, windmill farms have been a hot topic lately among anglers. There's an informative article in this issue as well. To break it all down, we have Jim Hutchinson, editor of the New Jersey edition of The Fisherman. Hey, Tim, thanks. Look, I don't claim to have all the answers in the latest article in the December Long Island Metro New York edition of The Fisherman magazine. What I'm trying to do is bring some of the questions out front and center so the folks in the powers that be maybe can address some of these. Now, I first put this article together for the New Jersey Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine back in November. I have spent the last eight months going through different studies from overseas, the Denmark wind farms, to American studies that are even being cited by the US government. The problem is some of the government studies have said, there's no problem, look at this study, it shows everything is great. Yet when I read through it, I have some concerns about electromagnetic fields from some of these underground cables from these wind farms, specifically the studies that I've cited in the article in the December edition, flounder species show avoidance characteristics around EMF fields. There are other studies that I've looked at and put this into the December edition of the Long Island edition of the Fisherman Magazine. I hope you would go through it. If you'd like to get some more information, the studies that I've cited, I've put them online at thefisherman.com. You can go up to the search bar and just type in citations. It's one of the four or five stories that will come up. Citations and footnotes is offshore wind blowing in too fast. Take a look at the December edition, read through some of the things that I've put in there, ask questions, because someplace in the middle between everything is great and everything is not so great, we've got to come together and find some of these answers. I hope you'll enjoy the article in the December edition, Long Island, Metro New York, The Fisherman Magazine. Let's take a peek at our weather this weekend with News 12 meteorologist, Rich Von Olin. All right, thanks, Tim. Hey, anglers, meteorologist, Rich Von Olin here, News 12 Long Island Weather Center. Getting late in the season, obviously, but uh, yeah, maybe still some days to go. Maybe we can get some uh, nice weather this weekend. Water temps, 40s, 50s, obviously cooling down with the snow we had. It wasn't too good, but wave heights, I'll tell you what, uh, Saturday, not bad. Uh, you know, we're going to see a north breeze early, a little gusty, a little cold, but uh, notice the blue, two to four again, uh, that north wind, the fetch really starts to settle down by Sunday. I think uh, Sunday, maybe the pick of the weekend, all sorts of blue there. Looks pretty good until a return flow comes in. Uh, it'll chop things up late on Sunday. But I tell you what, a little window for the weekend shouldn't be too bad. I think we'll be able to get that in. Uh, you know, Early next week, though, we're going to start to warm up but be kind of uh, windy, too, from the south. So here's Saturday. Not bad. You know, a little north breeze. A cold day, though. Temps in the 30s all day. It'll be kind of the icy day. And then Sunday, you know, not quite as chilly. A little light and variable breeze. I tell you what, you could get out there Sunday. That's my pick for the weekend. And you start to get some of the southerly breeze comes in. That's going to go into Monday and Tuesday next Next week and we're also going to see uh, you know some uh, chop and also some rain coming in but you know what not a bad weekend for December we'll take it that's the forecast meteorologist Rich Von Olin back to you Tim now let's check in with Fred Galafaro with some fishing news and some reports hi Tim hey um you know angling efforts really dropped off since Thanksgiving Thanksgiving weekend but there's still some good opportunities out there to bend the rod uh, out east uh, Still a couple of charter boats and the Viking fleet sailing over to Block Island. There's still real good action on sea bass, blackfish, and some cod mixing in. Uh, definitely, definitely worth the trip out there. Um, down along the south shore, there's still some blackfish on the uh, on the reefs and wrecks, but the better fishing now and the best opportunities are on the offshore wrecks. And there too, you have party boats sailing out of uh, Shinnecock, Captree, Freeport, Point Lookout, Sheepshead Bay. And uh, again, some real good fishing there and really mixed bag action with uh, sea bass, porgies, cod, pollock, haddock, wing, uh, even some bluefish mixing into catches this past weekend. So uh, another good opportunity there. And there's still some bass around. There were bass around on the weekend. Uh, Mark over at Bay Park Fishing Station, uh, he said uh, a couple of boats there did well trolling white mojos outside of Debs in 55 feet of water. And those fish are ranging from 15 to 25 pounds. 
further west, uh, the guys at Bernie's were talking about some uh, bass action along Ambrose Channel off Sandy Hook, so it's still catching good there. Um, the surf has, uh, has quieted down to some degree, uh, more to the east. Um, Robert Moses, there was still fish over the weekend. We had some fish Saturday and Sunday. Had a couple of reports from Monday and Tuesday that weren't very encouraging. Uh, a couple of guys, good fishermen, that drew blanks on those days. But uh, there should still be some, some of those small bass around. Uh, further west, different story. Joey from Bernie's said he's been catching 30 fish a trip, you know, just going out for a couple hours. You know, and those fish are on uh, diamond jigs with, uh, or tins with teasers, and uh, before dawn, uh, small needlefish. So, still action in the surf. You know, if you still still want to get out and bend the rod, uh, right in the middle of a cold cold spell here, but. Um, a day like yesterday, when the wind was way down, it's, it's really not all that uncomfortable on the beach. I uh, you know a lot of guys have racked the rods for the year, making uh, that Thanksgiving Day weekend their last, last shot. Uh, going back to blackfish, uh, don't forget, blackfishing along the south shore, technically New York Bight, uh, ends on uh, the 22nd. It's the last day you can fish for blackfish, 1222 keep blackfish. Uh, up in the sound, the uh, last day is this coming Monday, 12-9. Tim, back to you. Now let's check in with Mike Dean from Shinnecock. Thanks, Tim. Unfortunately, it's that time of the year. Uh, there's a couple of small fish still around. There's still some bait in the area by me. So a couple of humpback whales off of Tiana Beach, uh, a bunch of gannets diving. Uh, the only fish that seem to be right in the lip, uh, taking small sand eel imitators, uh, and it took a while. One uh, buddy of mine he ran into, he got a small one. He put it in about an hour and a half to get that fish. There's still some black fish around on the racks. The weather obviously has not been cooperating, but uh, you know, if you have some time and the weather you know, lightens up, it looks like it might get a couple of little breaks here and there this weekend. Uh, you know, it's worth going out there and pass the time. It's going to be a long off season for all of us. Uh, I think basically what you know, I'm focusing more on, and I'm sure a lot of us, are what sand is going to leave under the tree for us. Uh, I like to shop locally at the, you know, our shops like uh, Haskell's and East Quag, East End Bay and Tackle and Hampton Bays. Uh, a lot of the, a lot of the uh, independent shops, you know, these guys work very hard uh, all year to uh, to keep stuff stocked, to give reports uh, and everything that goes along with those mom and pop places. So really want to support them. Uh, think of that stuff that you really went through. Needed a pair of backup pliers, tsunami pliers. I find to be a really great value. Uh, Super Strike Little Neck Poppers that are used in the spring for the bluefish, pretty banged up. Never hurts to have a few more of those. Um, Waiting belts, obviously, are, are a must-have. Uh, you know, a lot of us, I know I'm guilty of it, did not wash a lot of stuff down last year or at the end of the season. There's always something you miss, and uh, corrosion, rust, whatnot is going to be there. Boga holders are another thing. Uh, Turtle Cove Tackle, which is available at... Uh, I believe J and H, East End Tackle, a few other shops has a really nice uh, line of uh, pretty much indestructible uh, plier sheaths, boga holders, um, escape knife sheaths. Uh, so you can look for that. Uh, pretty much, look, we're all fishermen. We're, we're never going to have enough gear. So anything that's going to work with that. If you really want to go for the gusto, a Haskell's custom rod uh, is is going to be quite the thing to make you a better fisherman for next year. Uh, hopefully I'll have another report for you guys next week and uh, get out there, catch them up, stay warm. The Dreamboat Contest officially ended on November 30th and the final tallies and winners will be released soon. Thanks to all the sponsors, especially Steigercraft, for all the great prizes. Remember, the only way to be part of the Dreamboat Contest is being a subscriber to the Fisherman Magazine. Great info and a great contest. Now let's check in with Captain Al Lorenzetti from the Fire Island area. Hey Tim, Fire Island Report, there's still a lot of small striped bass around, occasional keeper. Uh, black fishing on the offshore pieces has been excellent. And tuna fish uh, by the Linda Wreck, by the Yankee Wreck, all along that, you know, 15 to 25 mile range on surface popping plugs and uh, on troll deep lures being trolled down. Uh, so if you can get out there, the weather calms down, you get a decent day, I'd make the run and uh, get out there and fish. There's plenty of fish around. And also remember during the holidays, support your local tackle dealer. You know, I know people buy a lot of stuff online, but 
your local tackle dealer, that's where you're going to get first-hand information about where to catch fish and so forth. And, you know, there's all kinds of neat stuff you can get at the tackle shops for stocking stuffers and, and travel this winter if you're going away to carry a tackle and such. So uh, support your local businesses and have a great week. With the Fly Report, we have Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters. Uh, well, we finally got our first snowstorm of the season. Um, it, it is uh, going to be cooling off the bay water, so I think uh, in a week or two, the saltwater scene is going to come to an end here on Long Island. But there is still freshwater fishing. Uh, the Kinequat is still fishing very well. The TU boys, Peter, John, and Joe, they went out there. And even though, and even though it was tough fishing to them, five, six fish for the session was tough fishing. I don't know. I think that's pretty good. So, hey, it's it's great. We have the Carl's River also, and the ponds as long as they don't freeze up. So they're still fishing. Or you can do what I'm doing, and I'm tying flies. So tight lines, everybody. If you're looking for a quality fishing boat, one that's affordable, check out a Sea Pro powered by Suzuki. For less than $400 a month, get you into all the action. Visit Kale's Family Boating Center for a test ride today. The Fisherman is promoting the three R's, release, reduce, and rebuild. When you purchase a sticker for $10, you're funding this critical research utilizing satellite tracking technology. Show your support and visit thefisherman.com so this study can continue and we can learn more about striped bass. In the January issue of the Fisherman Magazine, we will be unveiling the tracking info from tag number two. Can't wait to see it. We've already raised over $1,200 towards new tags for the spring. Check out thefisherman.com and see the donor list. Now let's check in with Gage Simon from the Jones Inlet area. Thanks, Tim. With temperatures dropping, snow falling, and winds kicking up five and six foot seas, the action on the South Shore remains consistent for both boat and surf anglers braving the conditions. Surf casters hitting the West End at first light were rewarded fishing the incoming tide with reports of a few larger fish running off and breaking free with a steady catch of shad, schoolies, and the occasional keeper landed using diamond jigs, bucktails, and soft plastics. This week, northern gannets have been seen dive bombing the shore, which is a good indicator that herring are present. With less than two weeks remaining for bass anglers, live lining and chunking herring as bait presents the opportunity for even a novice angler a shot at landing a trophy bass. Jones Beach Fishing Pier at Field 10 is a great place to catch herring along with Magnolia Pier in Long Beach. Despite high winds and freezing temps, on Monday morning, Captain David Mahler aboard his 33-foot Donzi Center Console, the Cross Connect 2, along with Wontaw native Bob Bosch, headed west in search of some bigger bass. They started in 34 feet of water, landing dogfish after dogfish while live lining bunker. The action really turned on when Captain David decided to follow the huge bait balls on shore into 14 feet of water off of the roundhouse. With the bottom almost visible, they saw hordes of smaller fish with cows lurking below. Finally on the bigger fish, they had mad runoffs landing six bass with two 29 inch keepers and most fish had parasites on them. This past weekend, the bigger head boats had no trouble getting to and from the fishing grounds, hitting their wrecks up to 60 miles offshore despite rougher conditions. With most anglers limiting out on blackfish and jumbo black sea bass with a bycatch of giant porgy, pollock, red and white hake, cunner, bluefish, and bonita all in the mix. That's it for this week, guys. Wishing everybody bent rods, tight lines, and I'll see you out on the water. Let's check in now with Chris Ludwig with some fishing info and maybe some holiday gift ideas. Thanks, Tim. What's going on, guys? So this last week, there were a couple days that were pretty unfishable, but we managed to squeeze some out of the mix. I'm going to be referencing an area a little bit farther east of where I normally fish, about 20 miles east of Jones Inlet. Uh, and the fish were congregated on the farther sandbars, farther as in farther from the beach, under the birds seemed to be feeding on sand deals. We were catching them on diamond jigs, A27s and A17s with the green tube. The interesting thing, though, we weren't just reeling them in. We was casting out the jigs, letting them sink, and popping them. And on that flutter down, the fish would pounce once we found where they were. 
Uh, so that was the story for most of the week. Pretty simple, easy, consistent fishing. So I'm happy about that. Fish we caught were in the range of, you know, anywhere from like 15 inches. The biggest one we had was maybe 24, 25. Uh, so pretty happy about that. On the other side of things, the holidays are coming up. And there's always some gifts that you want to get your fishing people. But I figured this year, instead of saying some pliers or a belt or anything fancy, I try to give the gift a success. So these are the three lures that have always been panning out for me. The first one, it's called the Almost Alive. That's the company. I believe this one's a bay anchovy. When the small bait's around, the striped bass pounce on those things. And the first light jigs. These ones are called snook jigs, but they're basically bucktails. The synthetic hair really stand up to the bluefish. So this year coming up, next season, when they come around, get yourself one of these guys. It's by First Light Tackle, based out of Fort Pierce, Florida. You can order them online. They're very cheap. And, of course, the good old reliable spook. This topwater presentation seems to always gain a bite from the fish. Um, I'm very satisfied with it, the way it walks on top, especially back bay fishing. They pounce on it. It's pretty cool. So give the gift of success, check out those laws, but other than that, have a good week and hope you're still catching. From Sheepshead Bay, we have Luke Feeney. The past few weeks have been really cold and windy as we approach the official start of winter, but the fish are still out there as there was a ton of life. The big bass have pretty much moved on both up the Hudson River and down the Jersey coast to go further south of the winter, but there are still plenty of schoolies to be caught here in the coming weeks that are a blast on the light tackle. The bass have been on the smaller rain bait over the past few weeks, so the smaller profiles have really worked best. The birds have been all over in the area around the jetty though. The birds really have been all over that area, all the way from the tip of the jetty, further east down the beach, further to the south by the edge of Ambrose Channel, and even further west on the offshore side of Jerry's Lump in the more shallow water, where the bait gets trapped in that white water. The birds are a good gauge to find the fish initially, and many of the fish are on top, but once you find a solid body of fish, you can read them on the bottom machine, packed in with that small bait, and take a drift, take drift after drift through the fish. I found that I've done best near or on the bottom, and the, some of the lures I've been fishing with over the past few weeks have been uh, storm shads, tsunami shads in both the four to six inch size, and bouncing them right on the bottom. I've also been using diamond jigs, mainly in the A27 size range, and I found that the green tail has been working great. These fish are on the smaller side and there are very few keepers in the mix, but when paired with a light spinning rod, it really is a blast to catch fish after fish this way. The black fishing has slowed down considerably with all the recent cold weather and wind, but there are some guys who are still picking a few black fish on the days they can get out on places like 17 Fathoms, New Bottom, the Mud Buoy, and the Fisherman Buoy areas. The best bet right now is to go out in the morning and have a blast with some of the smaller bass, as this has been a really solid bet over the last few weeks. From Staten Island, we have Mike Sentry. Thanks, Tim. Hey, guys. Mike Sentry here. Hope all is well. Well, Thanksgiving is pretty much a wrap. Another year, another day. Well, striped bass season, same thing. They're pretty much gone. A couple of my buddies been going out. They've been getting skunked with the striped bass. Now, with the exception of Mark George, he's been hitting New York Harbor. He's been targeting the schoolies, having some good times. So here's a picture of Mark with some, you know, short school striped bass, light action. Most of my buddies now that are hardcore fishermen, they're out there doing the uh, blackfish uh, trips on the charter boats. Yes, they've been pounding away at the Shrewsbury Rocks. A lot of shorts out there for sure. And got to say, dogfish everywhere, even this time of year. It's pretty crazy. So if you want a bigger size blackfish, head out to the deeper waters, deeper wrecks. 75, 80 foot, 90 foot wrecks. Those have been producing quality size blackfish. And uh, that's it for me, guys. So December, get out there, go on a charter boat, and uh, have some fun with the with the uh, blackfish. I will say this: green crabs. Forget about the green crabs. White leggers are the way to go. From every single buddy of mine that went out blackfishing, white leggers are producing. A couple of my buddies been getting skunked with the green crabs. So remember that. Well, gotta go. Take care, guys. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Adios. Last night from the Western Sound, Raul Ortiz, the urban angler, was creeping while you were sleeping and hit the incoming tide and had fish from 20 to 26 inches. No keepers, but good action with about 20 fish caught in about a two-hour period. Now let's check in with Captain Mark McGowan from Cow Harbor Bait and Tackle. Hey folks, good to be back. 
this week's uh, fishing report's a little light. It's mostly been about the herring. Um, the past snowstorm that we had actually stirred them up a little bit. There's a lot of areas that are just packed with these little peanut bunker and the herring are chasing them. I haven't seen a whole lot of uh, spearing yet and the herring like totally love the spearing. You know when uh, spearing are around, the herring are gonna be there. Uh, there's different techniques to use for these herring. Most are uh, with the common sabiki rig. You can always mix it up. Remember, grass shrimp are in the mix as well. So these herring are uh, really focused on small baits and other times uh, you'll find they're really focused on like a two inch bait. But I would stick with the regular where you might want to change up remember you can use three quarter to one ounces something very light cast out jig it if you're in a rocky area or sticky structure around uh, docks or piers which is very common uh jig them up and down straight and uh, that works you can use at times a little cast master on the bottom for flash um other times uh, people will use something called a uh a herring flasher uh, you can either put it on the bottom or the top I recommend putting it on the top uh, the the top because it they spin a bit and that's what creates the flash so um, as far as other things go it's uh, tips for people that have wrapped it up you might want to take a look at your guides if you had any issues where lines were snapping it's always a great idea to check those guides we get a lot of broken guides come into the rod shop and uh, as well as uh, you know alterations and custom custom uh grips handles seats you name it it comes in so you also want to take a look at your reels if your reels are a little salty it's a, a good idea maybe you want to give us a call ship it or drop off your reel 15 dollars all the time and we're open all winter long so easy to get to um might call the shop 631-239-1631 you can answer uh questions or uh you know, uh, give us questions, we'll answer them for you. It goes both ways. We get a lot of uh, conversation on the phone. We always look forward to it. So listen, um, I look forward to seeing you all again and the feedback's been fantastic. Shop news that's updated, uh, great news. We've got St. Croix lineup is coming to the North Shore of Long Island here on our shop. And we're gonna have a beautiful selection for folks to go through, as well as um, great news for uh, surf casters and boat guys. Century Rods, as I mentioned a couple months ago, we became the new dealer uh, for Long Island. Uh, the latest thing that's gonna be happening is I've gotten a lot of feedback for what guys are looking for for builds as well as price points. So I'm gonna be building the most popular blanks. I'm gonna be putting them on all Fuji components with surf grips and styles of cord grips or shrink wraps uh, exactly made. So you can come in and check them out. If you wanna buy it, you buy it right off the floor. You never seen prices like this for Century Rod. So this is really gonna blow open the market and I think that's fantastic. If you have any other ideas or uh, you really wanna figure out something for Christmas present, I uh, urge you go to the Fisherman Magazine. They've got a great buyer's guide with a lot of recommended products that would be great for loved ones in the holidays or even just buy them for yourself. So I'd like to wrap it up by saying I bid you peace and tight lines. With another holiday gift idea, we have Peter Tornowski. Thanks, Tim. If you're black fishing still at this time of year, it's usually in about 60 to 80 feet. And uh, pulling up an anchor from that depth, especially if you're by yourself and you don't have a windlass, um, that's not an easy job. So what I like to use since I haven't taken a plunge and, and gotten a, a spot lock yet uh, is I like to use a, um, an anchor ball. It's a float attached to a line that's attached to a metal ring. Um, and the concept is to bring that ring using the boat, bring that ring all the way down to the line, to, down to the anchor. And um, it lifts the anchor and the anchor floats on the anchor ball. And... Um, then you're just basically pulling in the line. It's very simple. It makes the whole process effortless because the full weight of the anchor is actually being carried by the float. Now the anchor ball is great and easy to use, but I am gonna ask Santa this year for a uh, GPS anchor, like the uh, Minn Kota with spot lock um, or something like that, because that's as easy as it gets and um, the, the difference with that is you don't have to anchor over something and, and then maybe anchor a couple of times to get over your spot. It's going to get you dead on accurate right on where you're looking to go. So hopefully there'll be one of those under the tree this year. Thanks. Back to you, Tim. If you'd like to be part of our weekly video fishing broadcast, we're looking for social media savvy anglers for hyperlocal reporting from around the New York metro and Long Island area. So if you're a captain, 
Tackle Shop or just an avid angler. Contact me at libayrat at gmail.com. Remember, like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and tap on the bell to be notified instantly when we post a new video on YouTube. And of course, be a subscriber to the Fisherman Magazine to be part of the Dreamboat Contest. Like New Jersey Fisherman subscriber Chris Docks with a 5.52 pound sea bass. Officially, the last entry for this year's contest. Stay warm, and I'll see you next week right here at the Fisherman. Win the incredible Steigercraft, Evinrude, Lowrance, Grand Prize Boat Package, and more in the Fisherman's 2019 Dream Boat Fishing Challenge. Get the details now at thefisherman.com.